call this meeting of the Finance Committee to order. Uh, we have no public comments, so we'll move into our agenda items. Uh, first item being our purchasing agenda, and I'll hand it over to Ms. Cripps. Okay, we will start down through our purchasing agenda. It is actually kind of a lengthy one, so but a lot of them are typical items for this time of year and for the operation of the district. So um, Coit has um, dance and learning instruction for the, to support their arts theme. So we, we have an item on there for PT Arts. Um, the next item is to actually add a blanket or order for temporary employee services for Robert Heff, and that's primarily for our administrative assistance. And the original blanket orders that we brought forth, I believe it was in July this year, it, uh, we had another company, but we're struggling to get help through them, so we're adding Robert Heff as another alternative to help fill some of our vacancies. We've got a contract to support um, Grupa with the Salvation Army for instruction and curriculum services. And the next group down under the support materials, we've got two items there for our power school. Um, one of them is for our annual, annual licenses, and the other one is we are actually working through our, an upgrade to our upgrade from last year to get us more current again. So it is services for that. I forgot to keep moving down here. Um, and then the next group, oops, now it wants to jump all over. Sorry for those people watching. I am making you seasick, but we've got some technology orders. Um, the first group there is SR funded with student technology devices and additional charges for chargers for school for 875,000. Um, we have staff technology devices for instructional staff district wide at a total cost of 363,680. Um, the next group we are updating some student technology for design classrooms at Museum High School for 84,810. And more ESSER funding for more student technology devices for labs at schools throughout the district. <clears throat> Again, we're continuing our work this year with Dr. Campbell with the Scholar First for the leadership development coaching consulting. The next item is to, um, we continue with Southwest Middle High School in developing that program and being more conscious of the academic materials that we have for that program in their dual immersion tracks. So purchasing South, um, social studies textbooks. Um, the next one that is the KSSN contract that we have every year for their services in our many of our buildings. The next item down is again a, a continuation of the work that we're doing. Um, we have a number of new staff that need to go through the certification and evaluation training. So working with JMD Consulting on that. As we have in other years, um, the next group down we have Cherry Health Services and those are the agreements there we have for the school-based health centers and uh, well, yeah, both the school-based health centers. Some of it is funded through Michigan Model, the Michigan Primary Care Association, and then with 31A. Innovation Central, we have a contract with Life EMS to support their Health <coughs> Sciences <coughs> Academy. Um, Ottawa Area ISD, we have the renewal of the E2020 licenses for the year for the throughout the district in secondary classrooms and then moving down to at um, with our final XQ funding we did a summer institute in August and the um, Grand Rapids Public Museum was a large part of that and the training and planning for it so they um, have now submitted their invoice for those services in August. 
um, as part of our ongoing HVAC upgrades. We've, um, due to the complexity, and Alex, if you've got questions, can speak to this better. Um, we've got Aberdeen, Congress, and Stocking. Those sites will have some additional challenges in going through the upgrades, so we decided it would be better to bring on a construction manager to help make sure that we stay on track and manage those projects. They did go through a, I went quote process. Proposal, I'm assuming, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, pro and vetted four different vendors and are bringing forth Rockford as their selection. Um, and then last spring we had some wind damage on two of our roofs and so this is the repair for those. So that's our rather lengthy purchasing mm -hmm. agenda. Are there any more detailed questions to it? I do have a couple of questions. Okay. So um, for, the, for the student technology, um, are those um, computers that are being used in school or are they loaners to students or how? I, say, I see Craig here, so I'm gonna let him. <laughs> I'm going to tap my expert. Awesome. Good afternoon. Uh, so, yeah, so the student devices that are in um, item number one under A there, those are student devices that are being both used in the classroom and our take-home devices. So they're part of the, essentially part of the one-to-one -one stock that GRPS provides to all schools to issue to students. <clears throat> And then I, I also had questions in regards to, um, one was the equity driven uh, for leadership. What, um, I mean, who's the consulting, what leadership, it's number five? Um, Dr. Campbell. Dr. Campbell. Is that the doctor, the work we're doing with Dr. Campbell? Okay. And then also um, in regards to some of the, the health care pieces that you were saying for some of the high schools, um, what does that entail? Um, it was probably... Items one and two under B. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Cherry Street Health Services. Yeah, they provide the um, school-based health centers. And so we kind of got some things that they pay for and then we pay for, and it's a joint effort to run those school-based health centers. So is it health education in the classrooms or? No, it's an actual health center. They can have services and treatment, medical services provided. Okay, so dentist and? Although that dentist provider would be different, but there are dental services, I think, right? I think oh, it's okay. some yeah, of the locations, I mean, they yeah. do yeah, have they dental. Yeah, they can go in for their shots, Pads they and, can. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Yep. That's all I had. Great. Any other questions? Yeah, comments? I was yeah. Just, I was just wondering about the uh, <clears throat> the construction manager cost, at eight hundred fifty-seven thousand. Um, could you give a little detail about that? Is that an individual who will be supervising and managing these three projects, or is it three different managers? Um, and and the complexity and and. Uh, and the length of time required in these projects, I mean, it just seems like a lot of money for, for a manager, and, and I'd like to apply for that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, Good. Yes. Um, let, let's start with the complexity of, of, of the, uh, those projects. Um, they're going to be, as of right now, occupied buildings, which means that we're going to have to uh, figure out an extensive phasing plan, a detail phasing plan for us to be able to do the work uh, while we have students in the building. <clears throat> so, um, and we also are looking at a very, very tight uh, construction period. Uh, we were hoping to be able to do the work during the summer, but that's just not going to be possible. Uh, so it's going to probably start um, construction as soon as the school year ends, and it may go all the way through um, possibly December. Um, so we have that period where it's going to be uh, crucial to have the coordination going on. 
Um, the, the fee basically includes uh, pre-construction services, which is for us at this point extremely important. You know, we're talking about supply chain issues. We're talking about um, a, uh, long lead items. Uh, what, what, what we heard in the interviews, you know, 52 weeks to get a, uh, you know, electrical panels uh, and things of that nature. So um, there is a cost. A, it, 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 uh, cost estimating right now is very uh, unpredictable. Uh, so we felt that it is paramount for us to have that help to be able to have accurate cost estimating as accurate as we can get it. And the construction services, the pre-construction services will give us that to be able to help us manage the, uh, the budget for, for the project. So hopefully I answer your questions. Okay, so, and when you talk about the complexity, of each of these buildings. We're replacing the whole uh, heating and, and air conditioning systems yep. in we're, each building? We are replacing completely? everything, okay. everything. Okay. We're taking out existing and providing new, including air conditioning. Okay. Uh, These buildings haven't had any air conditioning for, well, uh, decades. And uh, so, so um, one of the things that, uh, um, that we're going to be uh, asking um, the, uh, the construction manager is to help us identify what systems need to stay in place until the new system arrives because we don't want to catch ourselves in a position where we demolish a piece of equipment and now we can't get the replacement for nine months. Now we're dead in the water. So, so th that's the type of expertise that we're looking for. Thank you. That brings more clarity to the, to the expense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Smart, what might you estimate the actual construction expenses to be for the HVAC replacements? Is it about $2 million per building? Is that what we were budgeting? Uh, be yeah, more? between 2 yeah. and $3 million yeah. per building. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, at um, some point, hopefully soon, uh, we may bring back some of those, yeah. uh, the, the cost, the ones we put these projects out for bids. Uh, the first project is going to be uh, bid is going to be Congress <laughs> Elementary School. Uh, and Aberdeen and uh, Stockton will be the following year. And are these, forgive me if this is something we've talked about, but are these part of something that was approved a long time ago that we promised the public? Mm -hmm. I, my only wonder is with the facilities plan just starting, we're putting so much money into these buildings that it gets me a little weary when we don't have anything decided on with the facilities plans. And I feel the same way. Um, we, we, we are moving the way that originally was approved, mm -hmm. but we are still pretty limbo. We, we, we can at any given point stop the process mm -hmm. when all the decisions are, are you know, um, if we reach decisions that will change the plan, the original plan, we'll just stop um, and then not, not continue on. But in the meantime, we're going to continue um, just w under the assumption that the original plan is, 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 will continue uh, uh, to be executed um, because we have a certain time frame. We don't want to wait too long and then now we out of, run out of time. So, mm -hmm. so, so we're just, um, um, I guess, being proactive mm -hmm. at the planning um, and uh, documentation that we need to develop. And, uh, but like I said, we can stop at any given point if the board makes different, you know, decisions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I will entertain a motion to move this forward to the board for approval. Move. Thank you. May I have a second? Support. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, motion carries. Okay, we will move forward to the, uh, is micro grant the right word? Mini grant, excuse me, from the Doug and Maria DeVos Foundations, of which there are many. That's what I mean to say. We have several. So I'm not going, it's kind of a lengthy memo. We'll just kind of do some highlights. But several of our district administrators are going through the West Michigan Leadership Academy. As part of that, the Doug and Maria DeVos Foundation provide them these mini grants. Each administrator has provided a plan for how they are intending to spend their mini grant, and those are detailed out. Um, Burton Elementary, Amarina Nelson has a plan for, and she's calling it learning and community building. Um, trying, uh, each one is trying to address a need in their specific building. So, 
Um, Coit Creative Arts also has one. Theirs is more on a PBIS rewards program. Dickinson Academy um, is looking for classroom management and SEL training. Um, CA Frost Middle High School and John Paul Park Zoo is also a PBIS rewards program, a workshop for staff, and a book study program. Our Family and Community Engagement Office has one in there for their Taste Buddies um, program that they developed during COVID as a way for outreach into the parents and families. Um, Grupa has one in there for targeted tutoring intervention for female algebra students. Kenna Shea has a book study program, a PLC work stipend, and culturally relevant textbooks. Stacking Elementary <coughs> is looking to do some core curriculum field trip experiences for these are longer distance field trips than our students may be able to have and I would say very neat experiences to me to be able to go down to Greenfield Village or to visit our state capital. And Union High School, um, Jessica Mott has a mini grant in there to um, support their scholar leadership teams. So those items I believe on your agenda are listed as action items B through J. And I think we've decided we can vote on them as a group rather than individually. <laughs> Very good. All right. We'll open up for questions or discussion. One question on the, on the group of um, mm -hmm. targeted uh, uh, tutoring for female algebra students. Uh, are there any legal ramifications with that project targeting only female students? I'm not sure I will have to ask. If there are students who are males, will they be provided the same service? I'll have to, I mean, I'm sure knowing the school, they're looking at their data and trying to address the needs, um, but I can follow up and, and get those answers for you. Thank you. Okay. And, and Dr. Flores, your concern for that is that equity? Equity, absolutely. So one boy, one girl, is that what you think? Because it's in, the, it's in the title. Right. What uh, creates a, an alert for me and, and says, okay, is this, if this is only targeted to females, then um, you know, do we have a, an equity issue here legally? And I, and, and I don't know. I just, uh, it's an alert. And, yeah, and I think that's where they were trying to point out that they've got 79% of their ninth grade females are below grade level, where only 50% of the male mm -hmm. ninth grade students are below grade level. So, well, and just I understand targeting. That. Yeah, it sounds like Maybe targeted intervention. Target yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just want to make sure that it's not, uh, you know. Presented. But also acknowledging we need to help sure. the 56% of the male ninth grade students that are also struggling mm -hmm. with it. So. And, and I'm wondering too, along with that, again, is is the academic committee getting um, the data and information in regards to how um, these kinds of choices are being made? Meaning that um, if they're finding out these facts, and then this is one way of of trying to address it, um, is is the are, are those committees coming to the academic committee in order to say, hey, here's what we're finding given our district and given uh, what we what we want to promote or, or need to promote because there are there is interest in this. I'm just, it, it just doesn't seem that we're hearing a lot of, of uh, these kinds of things other than, you know, a grant like this coming before the finance committee. It doesn't really I'm not sure who should be alerted first or, yeah. or anything like that, but um, but just making sure that we're speaking to each other and, and getting the data so that we are able to further report and, and dig deep into these other academic arenas too. So 
I would like to say that overall, I, I think that many of the mini grants are are very very innovative. Uh, I support uh, you know this concept too. I I, I just uh, you know only express my concern about about the language that it not be exclusive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, am I correct? These mini grants are um, they're through the individual principals being involved in a right. separate program. A right. mm -hmm. So that's where it. In my head, it differs a little yeah. bit. Um, like if we were asking the foundation for specific things, mm -hmm. then I would be more concerned about what you're speaking to, um, gathering the data and making sure the money is going where the need is. For this, it seems like it's more like if I was taking the Leadership Academy and I could ask for a grant for my <coughs> students in my classroom kind of thing. And that's what, yeah, what the intent of these. And over the last several years, we've had other administrators come through and then had identified projects within their buildings. So mm -hmm. this is just a new cohort of administrators going through the Leadership Academy. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I mean, it really allows those building leaders some autonomy on how to, to best support their schools, so I'm, I'm sure it really is um, supporting their work as building leaders, too. Okay, great. Well, we have one thing to check in on, so I think yep. maybe we could um, take a vote to move forward this uh, the donation recommendation to the board pending um, um, any challenges with that one. Yep. Uh, I will follow up and get that information out to you. Okay, so may I have a motion to move forward the um, Doug and Maria DeVos Foundation mini-grants? So moved. Support. Great. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, one more donation. Yep, we have one more donation, and this one is from the Norm and Marilyn Levin Family Fund of the Grand Rapids <coughs> Community Foundation. They have awarded a $10,000 grant for the Union High School football team lockers. And a part of our ongoing work in upgrading the facilities at Union High School for Athletics. Down to that one. Great. If there's no discussion or questions, I'll take a motion for approval to move forward. So moved. Support. Great. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Moving on to reports, updates, and discussions. August 22 financial statements. That's what I was going to say. We are going to start with the financial statements. I won't spend a lot of time on them. Um, they are, um, you've got the memo in there. And just, there. things are tracking where we would expect them to track. Um, it's July and August. A lot of our activity actually goes back to last year's fiscal um, year. So new year activity is, is fairly limited in July and August. There are a few things that may stick out as a little unusual. Um, say usually that accrued salaries and benefits is actually showing as a negative balance. Um, and that's because of the way we escrow teachers. They had actual less earning days than they were pay They received a full paycheck, but had less earning days. That will balance out during the year as they continue to have earning days. Then we'll draw it down on it again over Christmas break where there aren't earning days, spring break, and then fund it through and build up a balance to pay them through next summer. So escrow looks a little strange on that accrued salary line. Um, if you go down to revenue and expense, Again, you'll see the largest item there is our property tax. We did an estimate of in, on our budget on what property tax are, but because we have a summer millage <coughs> collection, we've collected more than we had planned on. We'll adjust that during our um, budget amendment. So other than that, those are probably two of our bigger items on there that look a little unusual, just to highlight those for you. Um, special revenue is tracking. Um, starting to get up and running through food service, but again, August, there's not a lot of activity in there as well. So if there's any questions on the financial statements? All right, I hear none. Thank you. Okay. Move on to bond construction update. Welcome back, Mr. Smart. Smart. <laughs>
Thank you. So we're down to one building, one project for the bond, and uh, that's Innovation Central. Um, we, uh, we completed phase one, the first phase of the project, uh, and um, uh, Rockford Construction is, uh, has moved on to, uh, to start work on phase two and three. Uh, by December 1, uh, we are expecting to have uh, uh, phase three completed, and the building will be, that portion of the building will be turned back to us uh, on December 1, so we'll have that month of December to get it ready for uh, uh, our students to come back uh, on, in January. Uh, phase two will continue on. Uh, that's an ongoing uh, process all the way through 2024. And phase two, uh, phase four will begin January 1. Um, and that goes all the way through June of 2023. Uh, and I'll keep giving you updates as the phasing continues on. Uh, the project uh, continues to be within our budget, uh, within our contingencies. Uh, we, we are spending some of the contingency dollars. There's a lot of things that are coming up that we're not anticipated, but, uh, but we're still doing okay with that uh, to this point. So if you guys have any questions. Uh, have you found anything interesting in that old building? <laughs> We we have not found okay. any oh, no, any any no archives uh, or yes no <laughs> okay. no no not not yet. <laughs> oh darn! Sometimes no you dinosaurs. Find right. <laughs> exactly. We may. <laughs> right. It's only phase one, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Good. All right. Any serious questions from my colleagues? Okay. Well, over overall, with with um, Innovation Central and then the other schools that are there, how is how are they managing traffic and those kinds of things because we we heard a lot of comments in, in regards to um expectations that there would be uh with montessori some some things happening or not happening and 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 it wouldn't quite fit scheduling how are they doing with managing some of the construction pieces with school okay um it has gone actually uh, very, very well. Um, the uh, the Rockford team has been communicating uh, pretty much daily with Dee and, uh, and uh, Kira Reed from uh, Montessori uh, about all the activities that are going on. We have uh, the required fire separation between construction and school, which is required by the fire marshal's office. Um, and uh, we have some temporary signage, which is uh, helping even though our students, they learn their way a lot quicker than, than us all guys. So um, after the first day, uh, the, our scholars, they, they knew what was going on. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we, um, we had an interesting first day because everything was new to everyone. Uh, but uh, we uh, went through that process. Uh, uh, I, I would say it was painless. I expected yes. more problems, but we did not. Um, and uh, part of the reason I, I'll give credit to the Rockford team, they had extra people there just to provide assistance, guiding students and, and staff. Uh, and, uh, but, but like I said, uh, you know, uh, Dr. McGee and, uh, and uh, Ms. Reed are doing a great job communicating with the staff and uh, everyone is settled. Um, in December, well, January, they're gonna have to do it again. They're gonna have mm -hmm. to learn new, new, new traffic patterns. Uh, and how to get from point A to point B. Um, but um, it, it has been positive so far. Um, and, and we're responding quickly uh, when we hear concerns. Uh, if there are concerns about noise, which is, it happens. Uh, we communicate with the Rockford team and immediately they, you know, they remedy the situation. Um, so we're learning as we go and we're trying not to make the same mistakes again. Thank you. Construction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Great. All right. I see no policy discussions, and we have nothing else on our agenda. Anything else from you, Ms. Cripps? I'm all set. Okay. Wonderful. Well, with that, we'll adjourn our meeting. Thank you, everyone.